Hi, I'm Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today, in the shortcut series, I'm going to show you a couple of interesting features about working with the interface of Photoshop. Again, there will be a couple of things which can only be used in Photoshop CS6, but I will also mention lots of things which you can use in previous versions. First and foremost, the biggest change in the interface in Photoshop CS6 is that now we can change the brightness of the interface and as you can see all the icons and everything has been completely reworked in this version. There is immediately a really cool keyboard shortcut which is quite hidden, it's quite hard to find this, even on blogs they don't really mention it, so it's almost like a little hidden gem, a cool feature to impress your friends. So uh, the way you use it is Command F1 and F2 uh, or Control F1, F2 on PC. So let's see what happens if I use that. I'm going to press now Command F2 and as you can see completely I changed the interface and made everything brighter. If I press it again I can make it even more brighter but that's the furthest uh, that I can go. If I want to make it darker again I'm going to use Command F1. So with F1 I'm going to make it darker and that's the darkest I can get. So once again it has one, two, three, four different stages which you can easily switch between uh, by using these keyboard shortcuts. Now if you want to set these uh, phases up you can also do that under the Photoshop preferences and go to interface because here you have the appearance and these are called the color themes. So as you can see you have four color themes and you can also switch between them here in the preferences. But basically this is what you can use with the keyboard shortcut to switch between these. Apart from this we also have screen modes. We have the standard screen mode, the full screen with menus and the full screen mode. Now for these you can also set up a specific color for the background. You can do that here in the preferences or you can do it manually. So let me just uh, show this. If I zoom out a bit I'm going to hold and uh, press and hold Z on the keyboard. Click and drag to the left to zoom out. The great thing by holding down Z, not just pressing it, will keep the original tool selected once I let go uh, the keyboard shortcut. And by the way, since CS5, this is an option that you have with all the tool keyboard shortcuts. So let me just show you this again. If I zoom in, I press and hold Z and click and drag in to zoom closer to a part. When I let go the Z, my tool automatically switches back to the move tool. Let me just show you this with another tool. For example, I have my brush tool and I start drawing. Okay, and then I want to zoom out, so I press Z, zoom out, and when I let go, it switches back to the move uh, brush tool. I'm sorry, but also if you use the move tool and hold down the move tool, move it somewhere in the object, when you let go, it will switch back to the brush tool. And I don't want to do this with all the other tools, but I'm sure you understand it. So if you hold down a tool keyboard shortcut while you are using the tool, when you let go, it will automatically switch back to the previously used tool. Let me just undo this brush stroke and zoom out as I planned it. So now we can see the background color of this screen mode. And here if I right click I can choose a different color or I can even set a custom color. Let me just show you for example if I set it to light gray then it looks like this and if I go back to default it will switch back to the default color. As you can see it's not only the background color that you can change but you also have a, a subtle drop shadow around your canvas which once again you can change in the preferences. So if you go to Photoshop preferences general under interface you can find these options here on the right. So you have drop shadow or a line or none for uh, the border effect. I'm going to change it back to default here and I'm going to click on OK. Now as I promised in this tutorial I would like to talk about the interface keyboard shortcuts. So let me show you another very useful one. Whenever you draw with any of the drawing tools in Photoshop you will usually see the outlines of your cursor. 
let me just zoom back and I'm going to make my brush bigger by the way this is a very useful keyboard shortcut uh, I usually mention it in my tutorials but I'm going to mention it now as well Control and Alt on Mac and the same on PC but on Mac left click on uh, PC right click to change the brush size and hardness quickly and easily so Control Alt click and drag to left and right changes the brush size drag it up and down will change the hardness of your brush that's a really useful and fast way to work with the brush and as I said we see the outline of the uh, cursor so while we are drawing we see that outline if you press caps lock and that's the keyboard shortcut you will switch to a precise cursor mode where you don't see the outline you only see the middle point of the cursor and the reason why I said precise mode because that's the Photoshop terminology for this and it works not just for the brush but also for example for the eyedropper let me just switch back to normal I turn off the caps lock and I hold down alt with the brush uh, tool and then you can see we switch temporarily to the eyedropper tool so I can pick up a color from the image but if I press caps lock and then I use the alt or option key to switch uh, temporarily to the eyedropper you can see instead of the uh, eyedropper icon now we have a precise target which is much better to work with I, I prefer to work with this now if you don't want to use the caps lock to always switch to this you can also go back to the preferences by the way the keyboard shortcut to get to the preferences is command or control K and here on the cursors you can see that we can choose between standard or precise uh, cursors so if you want to choose or want to work with the precise cursors you can always set that up here under the preferences for the painting cursors still we will see a normal brush tip so we will see the edges but here you can also be strict and just say I want to always work with the precise brush or you can even have a full size brush tip which will show even the edges or you can turn on the show crosshair in brush tip which combines the precise mode with the normal brush tip so as you can see that's how it looks what I prefer to use is to have the show only crosshair while painting if you turn that on and then click OK what you will see is that you see the outline before you start painting but once you start painting the outline disappears so that is a very useful way to work now I switch to another color and as you can see when I let go I can see the outline and I can change with the keyboard shortcut we've learned today the size and then once I start painting I won't see anything only the crosshair and the great thing it works with the other tools as well so for example now if I select the mixer brush and I start blending these colors together you can see while I'm blending and creating something like a cloud here uh, it disappears so the outline disappears and that is a really useful way to work and it is always hard to stop painting clouds so <laughs> let me just delete this layer and I wanted to show you something else as well in Photoshop let me turn off the background to be able to see the transparency and as you can see I have these letters on separate layers so now that we have a transparent background I had this question several times that is it possible to change the transparency layout in Photoshop or the view of transparency and of course you can change it again under the preferences you will have the transparency and gamut options now here you can first of all change the size of this grid so you can make it more fine or make it more uh, larger I usually work with the medium one I prefer this but you can also change the grid colors so you can have a darker grid and in the background you can see how it changes or even darker than that okay or you can use colors so you can use green uh, or blue or purple uh, any of these colors and you can and you can even define these colors so for example if you prefer to have something ridiculous like this plus another ridiculous color next to it then you can have that clown pattern in the background if you want to but obviously I prefer to use something subtle something uh, neutral like in this case 
I like to use uh, the original colors. I'm going to click on OK. And there's one more thing I wanted to show you. And that is the color for the quick mask option. I don't know whether you use the quick mask or not, but if you want to change the color of the quick mask view, then you can do that again by double clicking on a tool, which is quite hidden, this option. You won't find it anywhere else, only if you double click on the quick mask icon, which is here at the bottom of the toolbar, just below the foreground background colors. So here you can change the color of this. But let me show you what uh, how it works. So let me just create a selection. So I have a selection. And if I press Q or I uh, go into the quick mask, so once again, I make the selection, then I go into the quick mask. Now you can see that we have this part selected and all the red uh, overlay parts are deselected. And if I want to see this in a different color, I can double click and change the color mode or view of the quick mask. So I selected a blue color. And now if I switch into quick mask, you can see it's a different color. And by the way, if you go back to that menu, so once again, double click on the icon, you can also define which area should be indicated with the color, the masked areas or the selected areas or the selected areas. So you can, invert the functionality of this color overlay and you can also change the opacity here. By the way, another very useful interface shortcut or technique is whenever you have a number, then instead of typing in a number, you can also click on uh, the word next to the uh, number and then you can drag right and left. So it's a scrub uh, change on the value. And let me show you this here, even in the feather, I can do it or uh, I can do it anywhere. For example, if I have my brush, I can use it on opacity. I can use it on flow or even on the layer uh, group or layers opacity. It works almost everywhere where you have a number that you can change. So even, for example, here in opacity, instead of using the, the scroll, you should always click on opacity and drag it up and down. It's much faster. And that's all what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I showed you some new features. And as I said, most of these features are available in previous versions, apart from the user interface brightness, which is only available in Photoshop CS6. Thanks a lot for your attention and I hope to see you next time.